Queen F6, Queen B3, King H8, Bishop A3, Rook A8, Rook D7, Rook F D8, Bishop E7, Black resigns. Hey, I think he was about 20 years old, maybe 19. He said he would like to become a, a black chess grandmaster, but there's no black chess grandmaster. So I didn't want to blow his dream and say, you know, if we play chess, and we play pretty good too. But, you know, it's like saying you're going to be president of the United States or something like that. It's like, yeah, okay. Why couldn't I be a grandmaster? I was obsessed by the game pretty much from the beginning. Once I got hooked, I just wanted to play chess all the time. The mid 80s in New York, in Brooklyn, it was crazy. For me to have chess as an outlet, something that I always wanted to do, that kept me away from when the bullets were flying outside. I was always inside studying chess. I just knew that this is what I wanted to do all the time. There was a guy on my job that told me he knew this kid and that he was a smart kid, but he wasn't really that good. I said, all right, bring him back. The first time I met the Black Bear School, I was 16 or 17 years old. These guys were guys who literally would play for hours and hours the entire weekend. They would barely go to sleep, and they would read about the game, finding these secret moves. They would buy magazines in other languages. I mean, who does that? And that's why I think the Black Bear School is such an incredible phenomenon, because it involved people who were so serious about something that it was a life obsession. It was almost like going to a martial arts school. Players like William, the exterminator, Morrison. William was the guy who was always cool, always in flow. Then you had George, the fire breather, Golden, the outgoing guy, the trash talker. It was epic to watch their battles. They would just beat each other back and forth, back and forth, 10 games in a row, 20 games in a row, blitz, just punching at each other, beating each other to death. It was cool to have that group as role models for what I wanted to become. Very few people could talk trash and play very well too. I didn't really stop playing the part. I just also played in chess tournaments. I recognized that the Black Bear School was insular. The most important thing you did in chess, or that they did in chess, was beat each other. And I was reading chess books about famous players all around the world. I wanted to beat those players. And I remember when I suggested that we study together, you might as well have run me out of town. So finally I said, I'm gonna go play in tournaments and I'm gonna try to chase those titles down. And it worked. It helped me to mature, think about calculations, analysis, data. The challenge with chess is with all these different pieces, the possibilities are incredibly complex. There are more possibilities in chess than atoms in the observable universe. That kind of complexity of the game is what keeps us coming back again and again. It just simply took over my life. The game that got me the Grandmaster title was won against international master Adrian Negulescu from Romania. And the first few moves of the game, I was still nervous. And then a quiet calm came over me. And I played in this incredible state of flow and relaxation. And the final move of the game was so easy. Allowed me to win in a way that I would have won when I was 15 or 16 years old. And I couldn't but recognize the strange irony in the moment that I was gonna become a grandmaster off a move that even beginners would find. It was just one of the greatest moments of my life. Maurice is the ambassador for the game in Chestnut. He's special, He's, Maurice is special. New York was a very good place to grow up playing chess. That said, it wasn't completely welcoming and there were people who never saw strong black chess players. We had very, very few in the country. So one of the major things for me as uh, an individual is to teach young African Americans that they can be intellectually great. We are all role models. There's going to be other people around you and they're gonna look at you in a certain way and you're, they're gonna learn from you in a certain way. I'm always coming up with the next idea but I'm trying to make a mark on the game as a commentator or as a teacher who goes to different countries because I want to create more grandmasters. For me, my wild rabbit is becoming better every single day. It's a never-ending process. That's what drives me in everything that I do.